Wait, remember Tuttenstein? It was the mummified delight of your recessed memories on Discovery Kids that ran from November 1st, 2003 to October 11th, 2008. When it comes down to Tuttenstein, I feel like this show was made just for me. I've always had a massive interest and love for both Egyptian history and Egyptian mythology, and maybe one day I'll make a channel all about that. But for now, Tuttenstein will do. Coming from Jay Stevens, who we've talked about extensively back in my Secret Saturdays video, his past with comics, his animation career, and the really awesome stuff he is currently working on, so nothing but love for Jay, he created the character of Tuttenstein in the mid to late 1990s through his comic work, and other comics involving this character even continued during the show's run. This image you're seeing right now is real. Where is Tuttenstein in the MCU? I look forward to the Tuttenstein x Moon Knight crossover on Disney+. Plus. So growing up, this show was definitely one of the properties along with Yu-Gi-Oh that truly got me into everything Egyptian history. Also, Brendan Fraser's The Mummy. So today, let's crack open the sarcophagus and unwrap this show. I am the Pharaoh! Like I mentioned, Tuttenstein was first conceptualized in a comic book in the 90s called The Land of Nod, clearly seeing how this character would turn into this character. Cut to the early 2000s and the kids' entertainment block known as Discovery Kids was interested in bringing some animated programming to it. One of the two main cartoons that would come out were Tuttenstein and Kenny the Shark. Tuttenstein would leave a nice little but mighty legacy spanning three seasons and even a movie which closed out the series in 2008. The character himself is based on real-life pharaoh Tutten Comet. Here being named Tudankin Setamun, with his name being a play on the beginning of that name and how some people know this pharaoh by, Tut, and combining the themes of bringing him back from the dead in a pseudo-zombie-like state like Frankenstein's monster, thus getting the show's name, Tuttenstein. Because of Jay's detailed work, while some things are clearly fiction, like him coming back to life being the main example, Tuttenstein in the show itself has a cleft palate, altering the look of his upper lip just like the real pharaoh. The main difference, however, is with the age of Tut, being 10 years old in the show when in real life he passed away around the age of 19. For the show, Tut's life ended short when he was crushed by rocks in a collapse temple while saving a friend who was doomed for the same fate. The real King Tut has a bunch of theories on how he dies at such a young age, from a blow to the head, sickle cell anemia, a fracture to his leg, or even a severe malarial infection. Now, Tut is probably the most well-known pharaoh, at least to the modern world, as when his tomb was discovered and recovered, it was completely intact and the only royal tomb not raided by tomb robbers, giving a lot of aid in understanding the process of mummification to Egyptologists. All that was found can be seen on display in Cairo at the Egyptian Museum, a place that I surely want to visit someday. In the show, we see this complete tomb brought to the International Museum of World History to be put on display there. Along with Tut in the show, and the sole item that brings him back from the dead is the staff he wields, the Waz Scepter, a real Egyptian relic that can be seen depicted through hieroglyphs along with Egyptian deities like Anubis and Set, as well as being associated with pharaohs. In real life, it is a symbol of power, or control, more specifically allowing for control over the chaos that the deity Set represented. However, in the show, the Scepter of Waz is presented as being more of a magical staff, but is used in aiding Tut against the Chaos Forces of Set, who is the main antagonist of the show. So, as you can see, there was a lot of nice detailing within making the show fit in the line with the real history behind a lot of what the show would be based on, while of course bending the truth to present a fun, light-hearted concept for a show. Pharaoh's honor, curse my heart, scarab, and hope to die. Discovery Kids <laughs> will be back. Discovery Kids is back! Our story in the show follows Cleo, a 12-year-old girl who spends her time at the museum, who is pretty fascinated about the new exhibit of Tut going on display. One night, her cat Luxor ends up running off to the museum as she follows him, only to find out that when she catches up to him at the exhibit, he can now miraculously speak, being a shocker for both of them. But upon noticing that the Scepter of Waz not being displayed properly in the right spot earlier, which could affect Tut in the afterlife, she now moves it to the sarcophagus which, like magic, pulls down a bolt of lightning during a storm that links together the artifacts in the room around the sarcophagus, reawakening the deceased young pharaoh Tut, who immediately needs to use the bathroom. Which I guess he instinctively knows what a modern restroom looks like and knows how to use it? 
or it's a complete mess in there. From here, we begin this fish out of water story, or mummy out of time story, as Tuttenstein now has come to terms with living in a new world, with his long forgotten and only history books and artifacts telling what's left for those around. Him as a character has this blend of a superiority complex over others because as he died, he was technically the true king of the world, or at least the known world to him. But mixing that in with him still being a kid and having the attitude and wonder that one would have at that young age, results in him always trying to act older than he is and present himself as a higher being than others. His reawakening, however, doesn't go unnoticed, specifically by the Egyptian deity Set, the god of chaos who here resides in a representation of the underworld. He is specifically after the scepter as him having it will allow him to travel to the surface world and become ruler of both the underworld and the surface world. Him not being able to travel there now without it has him sending his minions, ancient beasts, and other various monsters through a portal to try and retrieve it for him, setting up the overarching plot for the series. Cleo and Luxor essentially become the protectors and guides for Tuttenstein, for him to safely navigate this new world for him. See, he's not as brave and courageous as the stories about him foretell, so they do their best to help him in these run-ins with the creatures sent after him for the scepter. Despite all of this, the relationship between Cleo and Tuttenstein is very much that of bickering siblings, where Cleo being extremely smart and level-headed and Tuttenstein being more so the opposite. But during the course of the show, they do end up building a nice bond that is truly wholesome and a joy to watch. Being dead, he can easily lose a limb, but just as easily reattach it, and after a long day of exploring the new world and fighting back against underworld demons, he crawls back for a rest in his sarcophagus, all the while avoiding the museum's security guard, who is anything but the definition of brave, or a good security guard. The aspect of the show that I truly appreciated when I was younger and even now revisiting it is the fact that while the show does a good job at entertaining you, it does a great job of informing you, teaching you a lot about Egyptian culture, mythology, and more without feeling like it was created to spoon feed you a history lesson. This form of infotainment can be hit or miss a lot of the times, but the way the show ties in some really cool facts, informations, and myths through the story, action moments, and everything in between comes off extremely natural and is a genuine fun way of learning. The show will introduce you to Egyptian gods and deities and explore some major aspects that are crucial to Egyptian culture, specifically how the show teaches you about death in the afterlife, from the facts that we know for sure as well as the mythology aspect of it as well. It becomes informative and engaging. Like, this stuff to me as a kid was completely fascinating and was crucial in how I personally retained information. Even mentions of how when a pharaoh is mummified, that the organs and insides of the deceased are harvested out and placed into separate jars that they are then buried with. Jay Stevens is similar to myself with these interests, even being quoted as saying, I'm a nerd. I like reading about history and mythology, and the past is full of surprises. During an interview for The Secret Saturdays with Animation World Network, he worked tirelessly for years coming up with the look, setting, and characters of the show, while character designer Phil Barlow fully put together the look of the series, working with his longtime working partner, Helen Mayer, who was doing the color design for that show. This was until after 20 episodes when their contract ended, where now Thomas Perkins would be taking over, which Phil originally mentored him as they worked together on Extreme Ghostbusters, and of course Thomas would then go on to work on Ben 10. Funny, as I just deep dove into Phil, Helen, and Thomas a bit more in my Spectros video recently on my Jordan Fringe Gaming channel, make sure to go check that video out. Jay was able to craft a great look into the history and mythology of Egypt in a way that is understandable and entertaining to both younger audiences and an older audience. If something like this captures your interest, learning can truly be fun. But even if you aren't as into it like myself, there is still enough substance here for those who just enjoy the fun antics of a pharaoh brought back to life in modern day. Well, modern day of the early to mid 2000s. I am going to like being a god. Discovery Kids. We'll be back. Discovery Kids is back. <laughs> The show is very stylistic in the choice of its color palette, keeping it very muted and vibrant to match the lush dark tones of ancient Egyptian artifacts that help push out the more vibrant colors that scarcely detail stuff like the artifacts and even the magic of the staff. The show itself looks pretty great, even though the quality available out there to watch it may not be the best, even on YouTube coming from the official Tuttenstein channel. It was even nominated for three Daytime Emmy Awards over the years, winning two out of the three of them. After three full seasons, a movie titled Clash 
of the pharaohs would be released to finish up the series by taking Cleo and Luxor back to ancient Egypt with Tuttenstein after he still is struggling with dealing with the fact of his death and wonders if there's a way to go back and stop it from happening in the first place. But when they go back, Cleo gets mistaken for Cleopatra by this kinda shady figure. So this means she gets put in charge and having Tut be her servant, thus kinda switching their roles and attitudes. But that earlier strange fella may have some ulterior motives and getting rid of Cleo. Through the conclusion of this movie, we see the relationship between Cleo and Tut hit both a boiling point as well as become closer with understanding one another than ever before, as well as Tuttenstein learning about how he died. It truly was a fun journey from start to finish seeing what this show had to offer on both the entertainment side and the historical and mythological side. It surprised me just how well the show ended up holding up after all of these years, delivering an action-packed, character-driven historical romp that I think anyone can enjoy. But what about you? Did you ever get a chance to watch Tuttenstein? If so, did it impact you the same way it did for myself? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe with notifications on for more content like this. Click the join button to become a member and help support the channel. Follow me on Twitter and I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.